Thank you, Kenny. What a blessing to be here at Team Church. I've heard about you all for years and just grateful for the wonderful ministry and outreach that you've had throughout our region. And I really appreciate the, the thoughtful pastor that, spirit that Ken has and a very caring individual. And you're blessed to have him here with you. Um, my story is one that just demonstrates again the faithfulness of a loving God. Uh, my journey began as a child where my parents faithfully took me to church, Sunday school, every single Sunday. Uh, frankly, it was a pretty liberal church. I heard about Jesus. I heard about God. I didn't know about His saving grace in my life, but I knew He was a good example that I should try to emulate and follow. But in the course of the time uh, between Sundays, life was a bit different in our home. A lot of drinking, a lot of problems, a lot of fighting, uh, just a real uh, difficult situation that uh, I grew up in every single day, it seemed like. And one time I, we had this balcony, this kind of valley in our backyard, and I threw out all the liquor bottles. And uh, I'd had enough. You know, it was probably in the seventh grade. And it just it was a real burden, a lot of criticism. And, uh, but you know, even the wrath of man shall praise him. I don't ever look back at my past and think, woe is me. Look at my past. For God's grace is so much greater. Unfortunately, in the course of those ensuing years in junior high and high school, I started drinking a lot myself, starting in the eighth grade and through college. <clears throat> and on one occasion, uh, I was really involved with the University of Texas, um, but uh, we had a fraternity and we were rushing people for our fraternity and uh, this, trying to convince this young man to join. He was a very sharp young kid out of Dallas, and a very wonderful family. And, and I was trying to introduce him to my fraternity and he said, Robert, I really don't know if God wants me to be in fraternity. I thought, what? I only heard about golf, uh, heard about God on the golf course, you know. Uh, I never heard anybody talk about God really in a real way. He said, uh, I, I just had to pray and see what he wants me to do. But he gave me a book to read called The Saving Life of Christ by Major Ian Thomas. So I read the book just hoping to please him, uh, assuming he would come to Texas and join our group and get over this stuff. But I read the book. <clears throat> Fortunately, he did pledge. And in the book and in some tapes by Mr. Thomas, there's a story about God and Moses. And Moses, uh, uh, of course, was a shepherd, had a staff. And God, on one occasion, told him to drop the staff, if you recall. And in essence, he was saying that staff was what was his vocation drop it. And Moses said, well, why? Why do you want me to drop it? And God was saying, really, I didn't ask you to ask me why. I told you to drop it. There's a snake in it. Well, that staff represented what was important to him. Now, at the time, I wanted to be governor of Texas. I wanted to be rich. I wanted to be famous or whatever it was. Whatever I thought the world had out there, I, I thought that what would make me happy. More of the same. And um, yet, God was telling Moses to drop it, so he dropped it. And it turned into the snake, as you recall. And then <clears throat> the Lord told him to pick it back up. Well, when he picked it back up, you know, it turned back to the staff. And what happened with that staff? Well, he tore part of the Red Sea. Every battle he won, with the staff lifted up, Amalek was defeated. It was God's staff. It was God's power. It wasn't something of flesh and of his own humanity. And God said to me, Robert, what's important to you? Your friends, your vocation, uh, your interests, or your ambitions, whatever it is, drop it, let go of it. Give it to me. If I want you to have it back, I'll give it back. If I don't want you to have it back, I will not give it back. But if I do give it back, it'll be the rod of God. And at that point in my life, I realized, you know, uh, there's hundreds of millions of galaxies out there. They're in total order. 
There's no chaos in the heavens. And God was saying, Robert, I can put the same order in your life. Let go of it. Drop it. And so I did. I dropped it. It was Sunday night, November 2nd, 1969. And I happened to be a head of this fraternity council group. I was up in my office with my friend Jay. And I prayed with him. And my prayer was very simple. Lord, I give up. I give up running my life. I give up trying to be in charge because I thought I need to be totally in control. If I'm in control, then I can make it happen. But life was a roller coaster, and I was tired of that. Frankly, I was really saw the uh, unfortunate lifestyles of the people that I thought that were so great. I worked down at the legislature for the governor, lieutenant governor, and others, and saw the challenges in their own life that were not very pleasing. And so it was, to me, a common sense thing to do, that somebody much wiser than me should lead my life. Well, shortly after that, we started a Bible study. And the young man who led my Bible study uh, was very empathetic in terms of how, what a loose cannon I was. But I was very motivated and went out and recruited all my fraternity brothers to come and go witness to all of them. Of course, I fumbled through it, but God's grace was there. And a couple months, there were about 36 of us came to this Bible study because I knew those same guys needed what I had found and a new life in Christ. After that, um, I'd heard Dr. Bright, President of Campus Crusade for Christ, speak and uh, learned about the Holy Spirit of my life. But that was the power of my life. And following that, I ended up going out to California to their Bible Institute because I really didn't know anything about the Bible. But I planned on coming back and going to law school at the University of Texas. And, but I knew God was really probably changing things. Ended up joining Campus Crusade for Christ. Uh, we worked in Dallas, and I worked for the president of the organization, uh, Dr. Bright, for a decade, advancing him all over the world. Not that things were always perfect. I went through my own struggles, my own challenges, my own habits I hated, uh, bitterness of people that had hurt me in my life. And God was dealing with that. He was trying to show me that uh, His grace was sufficient in all that, that I didn't have to lead a life of resentment and bitterness. I remember somebody gave me a book um, by Corey Tim Boone, in my father's house, and there were some other books about getting over bitterness and forgiveness. I had a lot to forgive, but it was the, shed, it was the love of God shed abroad in my heart that gave me the power to forgive. I can't forgive, but God can through me. There were other books that people gave me to address the really discouragement that I went through. Uh, Merlin Crothers wrote a book called Power and Praise, and that whole process of praise knowing that God inhabits the praise of His people has led me time and again out of real discouragement uh, in my life to know that, you know, as I praise Him and walk with Him, my eyes are lifted up to Him. And not on my circumstances and certainly not on people, but on His grace and His goodness and His greatness. And that praise has probably been the greatest anecdote that I've experienced in my whole Christian life. And I, I trust Him with all the things that I'm going through today, personally and in public responsibility, which are very serious matters. But you can't do that carrying those burdens. Every night I cast my cares on Him. And I've learned not to, like a fisherman, you cast out and not to reel them back. And I cast your cares and burdens on the Lord. And as I've cast my cares on Him, and I can put my head on my pillow and go to sleep, because uh, you, you carry a lot of things in people's lives that you know about or circumstances in our country or threats throughout the world, which are very serious. So these are times that cause me to continue to grow, uh, grow in the grace of God. But today I'm 64 years old. And I can tell you I became a believer at age 21. And I've seen nothing but mercy and grace and faithfulness from a loving God. For all those years. I couldn't be doing what I'm doing today without, without the loving care of pastors like Ken and 
other friends, friends who've come in my life, I mean, the way that he's been pastor to you and others, people like that in my life have encouraged me and shown me the mercy of God. Uh, that has been the greatest thing that has encouraged my walk. So thank you for your time. I would like to close in prayer, if that's all right with you. Our Father in heaven, we bow before you, a loving and great God. You love us more than we love ourselves. Thank you for the dads in this room. Thank you that you're our Father. We say, Abba, Father, for you love us. And would Lord give us that capacity to love others as you love us. And Lord, thank you for your sustaining grace and your Holy Spirit that we can't change ourselves. Our flesh profiteth nothing, but in every way that we're conformed to the image of your Son by your power and by your grace. Thank you for this church and its outreach. May its mission abound and flourish. Lord, we just pray for our country right now. We pray for all in leadership and authority. Lord, we pray that your truth would be known. We pray that those who do not know you would come to your saving grace. We pray, Lord, against evil in the world. For, Lord, we know that there are those who don't know you, uh, who seek to destroy. We pray for their salvation. We pray for the hope in you that the world would see the Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. 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 Would you give Congressman Pittenger a hand, please? Thank you.